A challenge for all of us who teach ethics, whether in a formal course or as part of another class, is how to explore the relationships between matters that are out of our or anyone else's control or matters where our decisions can make a difference. One of my favorite iconic movies is The Blues Brothers. Toward the end, Jake's jilted fiancé finally tracks him down. Looking down the end of her gun, he goes through a litany of excuses as to why he wasn't responsible for standing her up on their wedding day, ending with, it's just not my fault. Some days our students sound just like Jake. As those of us who teach in disciplines from athletics to zoology strive to teach what it means to be an ethical professional, we hear all of our students' reasons for missing deadlines or not living into their obligations. While we want to be empathetic and respect their individuality and life circumstances, we also want them to remember that we all have choices, both in how we respond to our various circumstances and what we do with our lives. One strategy for engaging the conversation is to encourage our students to get to know their ethical self, to identify their own values and commitments. And then we can talk about how they can bring their best ethical self to their professions. While not always comfortable, we can also help our students explore their shadow side, sometimes by looking at examples of unethical behavior. Where can we be tempted to be unethical? We can also acknowledge that sometimes no matter what we want to happen, we do things we don't want to do and other forces are at play. So the conversation ethic becomes, can people really learn to make good decisions? Can people learn to be more ethical or is much of what happens to us just not our fault? Currently, evolutionary biology and moral psychology suggest that certain ethical tendencies like sociability and community are inherited by all people. Early social conditioning and successfully meeting developmental milestones also determine our behaviors and choices. But that early conditioning doesn't let us off the hook. So, as we talk about ethics with our students, we want to be sensitive to the fact that in some ways all of us are at the mercy of our nature and very early nurturing. Yet, we still have the ability to choose what we will do. We can choose to be more ethical if we pay attention and are intentional. Teaching ethics becomes facilitating a conversation with our learners about how they can be themselves, be authentic, at the same time they think about how, within their bounded freedom, they can make the best choices possible and become a more ethical professional. By focusing on the developmental tasks of adulthood, ethics games learning tools help people learn how to make wise decisions. And as they understand themselves better, students learn strategies to seek and achieve ethical excellence. The Ethical Lens Inventory, one of our flagship learning tools, helps people discover their ethical gifts and blind spots. Students are coached on how to effectively work together through recognizing ethical differences. The ELI also gives strategies to help compensate for ethical weaknesses due to both nature and nurture. The Bear Decision Model provides the foundation for ethics games web-based learning tools by combining knowledge of the four ethical lenses with a thoughtful decision model. Students can learn how to mindfully take responsibility for their choices. In order to support faculty members like you, colleagues teaching learners how to be ethical professionals, our ethics exercises and hot topic simulations can be easily inserted into a curriculum to provide an engaging approach to ethics and help your students learn how to make more effective ethical decisions. Contact us and we'd be glad to let you experience the Ethical Lens inventory and our simulations, as well as give you more information about our learning tools. Thank you.